She had another great quote. She said, I'm learning to want what he gives and not what I prefer. She said, accept whatever he gives, give whatever he takes with a big smile. Mother Teresa once said, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Our guest this morning has witnessed firsthand her great love, and he's written about it in his book, To Love and Be Loved, a personal portrait of Mother Teresa. We continue our conversation with Jim Toohey. That quote of Mother Teresa, you hear it everywhere. I mean, that's one of the most famous quotes. Uh, what's maybe a quote or something that she said to you that you'll always remember, you'll always carry with you? I remember one time I was asking her about my future. You know, should I be a priest? Should I be this? Should I be that? And she just kind of, she was tiny, and she looked up and she goes, you know, she goes, you want to know everything. She goes, I want you to pray this, pray this prayer. Lord, use me without consulting me. You know, a great prayer. When I, the legal work I did for her, one of the things was to protect the, her image and likeness, the use of her name, not let people fundraise in her name. She said that she preferred the insecurity of divine providence, and that's why she did not allow fundraising. She did none of it. She said, I prefer the insecurity of divine providence. And, you know, we live that way, don't we? If we trust in God, we, we almost grow to prefer it. She had another great quote that she said, I'm learning to want what he gives and not what I prefer. You know, I, I, I love that, that she was, she grew to accept what he, she said, accept whatever he gives, give whatever he takes with a big smile, you know, to accept. And, and she said to accept and offer the suffering because she suffered a lot. So all those quotes, you know, you ask me for one, I give you 10, I could give you 100 because it's become part of my life to think of, hear her voice, to think of what mother would want me to do in a situation. Um, and, and it's helped me become a better person. But as my wife will tell you, my five kids, I'm no saint, but maybe I can be better and God can do what he wills with my life. Well, to you, it's not just a quote, it's an experience. It's not just so uh, words written down, but it's something that someone actually said to you. So yeah. maybe it has more meaning for you. And you have plenty of those in the book. What are your hopes for the book? I hope it helps people's lives the way the Lord used Mother to help me. I think Mother has a great influence. She said the worst disease was not leprosy or AIDS. It was loneliness. People that feel unloved, unwanted, unwelcome. She said if you had eyes to see, Calcutta was everywhere, including here in the U.S., because people are starving for the bread of friendship. So I'm hoping the book will invite people to be better versions of themselves, to discover God loves them tenderly and wants to use their lives in his service. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to win the Nobel Peace Prize. You may not change the world like she did, but you can change the world of the people around you. And I'm hoping the book will inspire people to better lives. Well, and God is using you in the service of others because you've been traveling all over the place doing book signings. You actually had one here in Baton Rouge. What sort of reaction have you gotten to the book? Well, the people at Our Lady of Mercy were great. Uh, they stood in line to get it. And uh, people are all hungering for the truth. You know, in a time where we don't know who to trust, what to believe, COVID has separated us so much. All the social distancing measures have kind of torn apart our social fabric where we are fearful of others. Um, you know, it's great to be in an environment where we, where we want to restore trust with one another and be in, together in community churches, places. And uh, yeah, I've been all over because since the proceeds are going to the missionaries of charity, I better get to work and, uh, <laughs> you know, and help their work because it's, it's, it's inspirational what these women and priests are doing and brothers all over the world to, uh, to touch the lives of the poor because the poor are with us. And Mother said they're going to be the salvation of mankind. Jim, what can we learn? What can this book, what can she or but your book, your portrait, teach everyone in, in this day and age in, in almost 2023? Well, on her tombstone in Calcutta, of all the quotes of scripture that could be on it, there was one. And it's from John 15, 12, which is, love one another as I have loved you. That is a core message, isn't it? To this, this understanding that God wants us to love others the way we're loved, to forgive others the way we've been forgiven, to be merciful the way God's shown us mercy. And uh, if we live by that message, we would serve, you know, we would, we would try to reach out and give what we can. You know, for some people that are suffering with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, just the company of an individual to come and be with them makes a world of difference. So yeah, um, I think Mother Teresa has a great lesson to teach us and I hope the book is instructive in, on the way of doing little things with great love. 
Yeah, and, and it's been 25 years um, since she passed away. Um, what do you think she would say about what's going on now, about all this that we've been through, uh, whether it's the pandemic or whatever else, the war in Ukraine, or whatever else is going on in the world? What do you think mother would say today? I think she would pronounce the gospel. She was a missionary, you know, she loved Matthew's gospel that when I was hungry, you gave me to eat and that whenever you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. She used to take, uh, I remember seeing Janet Reno with her hand and Mother Teresa's hand and Mother went, you did it to me. She called it the five finger gospel. But it was that awareness that what we do to our neighbors, we're doing to God. I mean, this world seems to have forgotten God. And uh, Mother Teresa invites us to remember there is a loving God who's created us for a divine purpose and that we were made in the image and likeness of God. And so I think that call to recognize our great human dignity and then to be a gift to others, uh, this is needed more than ever. Well, what's next for you? I know you're doing a lot of book signings, but what's, what do you have next? What's next for Jim Toohey? I'm with Aging with Dignity, a not-for-profit I started at Mother's Encouragement with her blessing back in the 90s that has Five Wishes Advanced Directive that helps pl families plan for and discuss end-of-life care. And so Five Wishes is now in 40 million Americans' hands to help them plan for and discuss end-of-life care. Mother knew she had come from God and was going to God. Sometimes we medicalize these discussions, but the process of going home to God, end-of-life care, is a deeply personal, spiritual, emotional. And so... We do Five Wishes programs all over the country, and Aging with Dignity is very popular, and you can go to fivewishes.org and learn all about that. But that's what I spend a lot of my time on to help families have these difficult but necessary discussions. What about your next book? <laughs> you got another well, book in the works? You gave me one. You gave me the two saints. Two... Well, I, I think that uh, I never knew I was going to get this done, but I finally did. I'm glad that was a bucket list item. I'm a grandfather now. I'm... <laughs> Uh, I've got five kids that I love to be around. So, but but it, meanwhile, I'm going to go wherever God leads me. I do try to follow God's holy will, and uh, He dragged me to Calcutta against my will in many ways. And, you know, and I've seen what the Lord's done in the 37 years since. I don't know what's ahead. It's in God's hands. Where can uh, people out there uh, keep up with you? Where can they get the book? That kind of thing. Uh, they can become free members of Aging with Dignity. So, agingwithdignity.org. Uh, they can sign up for my blog. Uh, they can get five wishes, uh, but I do blog. I blogged yesterday on a great woman, Radora Donahue, that went home to God. Uh, and so I, I do blog on the issues of our times and people know what I was writing about COVID and what I'm writing now. We need each other. We got to get back together with each other because of the, uh, the, the COVID was a time for us all to take stock of our lives. And now we have to learn how to, to live with fear and uncertainty, but to depend upon God and to believe there is a loving God with divine purpose. And uh, yeah, so that's a message that needs to be made. And if God wants to use me, I'm ready to go give it. Finally, if there's one thing, one thing that you, you want people out there to remember about Mother Teresa, what would it be? The call to love, the call to serve. You see it all over people. There are a lot of lights out there. We can get consumed with the darkness, set free indeed. A lot of ministries here in Baton Rouge that are transformative. They're lights in the darkness. So not to be discouraged, to be people of hope, to realize that God's loving and leading us back home. Well, it was an honor to meet you. Thanks, for being, on the, Thank thanks you. for being on the show. Congratulations on the book, and we we'll wish you all the best in the new year. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Great to be with you. Well, for more on the book, or if you want to contact Jim, head to his website, agingwithdignity.org. That's agingwithdignity.org. I'm John Pasterek. Happy New Year from our WBRZ family to your family. Wishing you a new year filled with health, happiness, and hope. And we'll see you next week on Sunday Journey.